Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today, it's a matchup of limited edition Omega Speedmasters, the Silver Snoopy 2 versus the Speedy Tuesday Project Alaska 3 Tribute. Let's start with the Rockstar. Launched in 2015 as part of the 45th commemoration of the Apollo 13 mission, the Speedy that ultimately became the equivalent of a modern steel ceramic Daytona started as a humble $6,500 steel watch made 1,970 pieces. The timepiece is immensely clever in its detailing and premium in its spec, but above all, the watch is interesting because it so faithfully charts so much of the pop culture surrounding the successful recovery of the Apollo 13 mission as well as the subsequent movies. The timepiece is a traditional moon watch and 42 millimeters in stainless steel. This isn't one of those CK2998 unbeveled primitive cases. This is very much the standard moon watch case. Now you can see the watch is 48 millimeters from lug to lug. In terms of thickness, it's relatively compact. As with the sapphire crystal, it's 15 millimeters thick. You can see that the spacing between the lugs is 20 millimeters. And on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, it's an easy one to wear. It's not an overwhelming watch, although it was absolutely gargantuan by the standards of the late 1960s and early 70s. Today, it feels properly sized for a men's sporting reference neither large nor small, and that's a great place to be. Now the watch does have a remarkable strap, as you can see. It's a substantial bolstered hybrid textile, contrasting stitch, and of course on the underside calfskin. Also, unlike the vintage style pin buckle on the Speedy Tuesday, the Speedy Apollo 13 45th Anniversary Silver, Silver Snoopy 2 features a full clasp, and it's a lovely clasp because there's a minder system underneath, so basically once you've sized this strap down, you tuck it in through the little feeder aperture, and then you clamp it down, you size it up, there's no additional length flapping in the breeze, there are no minder loops, and it's a very solid system with twin trigger release, so this watch feels like a more expensive timepiece. And it definitely did even back in 2015 before things went absolutely nuts. Now, of course, there was a higher production, Silver Snoopy 1, back in 2003, and it's interesting to compare that watch to this one, because anyone who's fretting about the long-term prospects of this watch as an investment should realize just how dramatically this watch and the mania surrounding it brought up the values of the Silver Snoopy. Be one. Now, I mentioned the watch is rife with pop culture, and that's certainly the case. As you can see, the dial itself is a lovely matte white, so everything is essentially black on white, matte finish. You can see the image of Snoopy, and of course the Silver Snoopy, an internal NASA award to high-grade suppliers who offer outstanding goods or services to the space program, and thus the genesis of this notion of a Silver Snoopy award for Omega for its role in recovering the Apollo 13 mission. You can see that there are actually 14 cells outboard asking, what can could you do in 14 seconds, and they're actually cell frames like you would find on a Charles Schultz peanut comic strip. Snoopy himself sits, and he has a solid block of Luminova along with the individual indices. 14 seconds, by the way, if you're wondering what you could do in 14 seconds, the Apollo 13 astronauts used a firing of their reentry rockets timed with the Speedmaster for 14 seconds to regain their passage back to Earth. And of course, you could see that the dial features the quote from Ed Harris from the Apollo 13 movie, failure is not an option. So like I said, there's a heck of a lot of pop culture here from comic strips to cinema. The individual indices are interesting because they're actually blackened 3D blocks of Luminova. So you see the negative. That black portion on top is not Luminova. Instead, it's actually a chunk of three-dimensional Luminova that is placed on the dial with a blackened lacquer insert on top. So you actually see the outline around the black indices when the watch is loomed at night. As you can see, blackened hands at center. The contrast here is excellent. Of course, the tack, a bit more special than your standard moon watch. A standard moon watch has a thermoplastic Hesalite crystal. This one features sapphire. And a standard moon watch features an anodized aluminum insert for the tack. This one is both loomed and ceramic filled. Turn it all over. This is part of the magic of this edition. As you can see, it's not just a freehand engraved 925 sterling silver Snoopy, although it is that. There's actually a special enamel base, and you can see the image of the cosmos behind the hand-engraved Silver Snoopy quite literally is an enamel base, so you have freehand engraving and enamel. This is a very special piece. You can see the edition number out of 1,970, the Silver Snoopy Award, Eyes on the Stars, and of course Apollo 13 commemorated. These watches, well, it's like a mathematical equation in which one factor drops out because of commonality. Both of these watches feature the manual wind 
caliber 1861, 48 hour power reserve, 21 six beat rate, uh, shock resistant up to 5,000 temporary Gs, a cam lateral clutch system that is very tough, and of course this movement still issued by NASA, a manual wind tank tough old school Le Mans 1873 base improved by Omega that becomes the Omega 1861. So this movement still flies with NASA. So both of these watches have that credibility and that soul internally. Now you can see that the case of the Snoopy is conventional. It's polished on its bevels, crown and pushers are polished. There's a satin finish along the side, and you can see that's true on both sides. But the Speedy Tuesday from 2017, a 2012 piece limited edition designed to commemorate five years of the Speedy Tuesday weekly feature on FratelloWatches.com. If you haven't read Robert Jan Brewer, you definitely should. So this watch was an online special edition, and it sold out toot sweet, as they like to say. A wonderful case of Omega actually getting ahead of the industry, selling online and direct, it was a big success. Of course, the watch sold out because of the Speedy Tuesday Association, but aesthetically, the watch has more in common with the 1978 Omega Speedmaster Professional Project Alaska 3 prototype series. Now, a couple of them were made, and a couple of them even flew with NASA by special request, but you can see that this watch features a few distinct qualities that set it apart aesthetically from the Snoopy. First, of course, everything. And you can see the bevels, the pushers, the crown, everything but the relieved and polished vintage style Omega logo is of satin finish. As the original Project Alaska 3 was intended to be a minimal glare watch of dial and of case. So there is nothing but satin on this watch, including the underside of the bezel, the bevels themselves, everything that would be polished on a standard speedy moon watch here is satin. There's a lovely old school contrasting stitch calfskin strap, and you can see it's calfskin on both sides. Sides. And again, keeping with the vintage theme, you've got an old school Omega logo on the pin buckle. A uh, pin buckle here rather than a clasp. Jumping onto the dial side, you can see that the watch has one flourish you would not have found on the Project Alaska 3, and that is the applique Omega logo. You can see here that the text on the dial is vintage. So it's a vintage font, it's a vintage logo, and it's quite distinct from what you see on the Silver Snoopy. So in every respect, these watches diverge in design. They're mechanically identical, they're dimensionally identical, but the design nuances really matter here. As you can see, there is an extravagant radial style dial with radially arrayed individual numerals on the sub-registers. Now on the original Alaska 3, these would have been monotone. They would have been black to match the dial, again for minimal glare. Uh, here they're a contrasting still silver to try to give the watch a little bit of its own identity. Now you turn it over and you can see the case back isn't nearly as elaborate as what you'll find on the Silver Snoopy, but there's a little bit of custom work here. You can see that it is the Speedy Tuesday anniversary, acknowledging Robert Yen and Fratello. You've got the individual numbering out of 2012. You've got a tribute to the Alaska Project 3. And then if you look around the periphery, you actually have the word radial spelled out in radial array, a reference to the design of the dial. It's a lovely homage, and this is a lovely piece, because it doesn't have quite the attendant uh, speculation, hype, and as a result, value that surrounds the Snoopy. The Snoopy is well into Rolex Daytona territory. It's a bit of a mania. It's a bit of a craze. I don't know what the future holds for this watch, but I know that this watch, at least as long as it isn't eclipsed by three, four, five subsequent Speedy Tuesdays, is probably a little bit closer to its true market carrying capacity, and I'll talk about that in a moment. So let's talk about the late great Snoopy 2, because this is an incredible watch. Of course, it's got a lot going for it. It's a relative rarity with 1,970 of these compared to 2012 of the other. A small mark, but an important one in the endless array of speedy limited editions. This is a more imaginative and fully realized limited edition. Every part of this watch seems to have been customized with a little bit of a tongue-in-cheek, as well as real reverence for the subject matter. So from the dial to the ceramic loomed tack to the Case back and its extraordinary and extravagant combination of freehand engraved silver and enamel. This watch, right down to the custom strap and the unexpected for a moon watch full deploying clasp, really feels like something special. Omega went all out. It's hard to imagine that these watches originally sold for $6,500, and that's a fact. If you bought in 2015, that's what you would have paid for this watch. Now, while it's still cataloged at $7,350, real world pricing this watch is about $26,000 to $27,000. Again, we're well into ceramic steel roll. Daytona territory. So if you want to own one of these, God help you, if you bought it new, you, you lucked out. But if you want to own one of these today, I think this watch is going to stand the test of time. You might lose a little bit in the short term, maybe it goes down to 20 for a few years, but if you buy and hold, I don't think you'll lose with this watch, making it one of the few Omegas that I will discuss alongside 5711s and steel ceramic Daytonas. This is an awesome watch. It's important to note 
and that it's anything but the usual forgettable and generic speedy limited edition. There have been a million speedy limited editions, and yet everyone, from memory, unprompted, can recall most of the details of this watch. It's a legend. Let's talk about the cooler loom shot. You're going to see that at the end, but with the entire dial loomed, the solid blocks of Luminova as the indices, the loomed Snoopy, the loomed tack, this is a cooler watch when the sun goes down. It has an epic case back. Hand engraving and hand-laid enamel, basically high horology details on a Speedmaster is unheard of. This is the kind of thing you expect to see once in a generation with a skeleton special edition or some sort of metier d'art, and that's exactly what we have here, a metier d'art, a double engraving and enamel. This is a watch that is probably a little bit more durable in daily use because the combination of the essentially indelible ceramic tack and the sapphire over the dial, you're not going to have to worry about buffing out scratches with a pencil eraser on this particular Speedmaster. This is an outstanding watch and one of the great timepieces of our era. Let's talk about the Speedy Tuesday. Now first, as one who has essentially made his name working on the internet with watch videos and online media, I appreciate that this was a wonderful trailblazer, sold online and as a tribute to a website. It was essentially unprecedented, especially as it's not a holding key edition, so this one really stands apart. I like the fact that it adds tone on tone registers. It has a little bit more contrast to the dial and this inverse panda look works well, setting it distinctly apart from most moon watches as well as the Speedy. I think on a pure legibility and functionality basis, this watch is just easier to read. It's a better watch in the sense that you can tell time more easily. Uh, it's true to Omega history as everything from the logo to the radial array to the radial array of the indices of the dial to the satin finish of the case, the pushers, the crown. It's a loving tribute and again that can continues right down to the vintage logo on the pin buckle. So whereas the Silver Snoopy is more of an imaginative modern effort, this is a watch that is perhaps more in tune with the Omega class assistant. This would be the obvious choice on that basis. I also think it's important to note that this is a timepiece you can buy a heck of a lot more easily. Although it originally sold for $6,500, you can purchase it right now for about $9,500 to $10,000. So on a speculative basis, you're not paying as much for hype. As the watch appreciated, yes. Is it still a good store value? Yes. Are you exposing yourself quite like you would paying almost thirty grand for the Snoopy? No. So on that basis, I think the more reasonable pricing, along with the relatively solid resale value of the watch, is highly attractive for the rank and file collector who maybe doesn't have gold watch money for a silver Snoopy, or for that matter, new Nautilus money for a silver Snoopy. Of the two, there's no doubting that the silver Snoopy is just an instant classic. It's a legend. It's everything people says it is. It has so much imagination, so much soul and charm and character. It is beautiful front and back. If I were to buy one for myself, however, I would pay the 9.5 grand for this piece because as, again, one who has made his name and his livelihood talking about watches on the internet, I identify with this one on an emotional basis and I like the fact that it flies a little bit below the radar. So ultimately, it's going to be the Project Alaska 3 Speedy Tuesday one for me. Guys, let me know. Which of these two watches do you pick for your own watch box? Okay, there we have the Speedy Tuesday with its lovely contrasting loomed sub-registers and full loomed Omega logo and nameplate script. And then we have the Silver Snoopy 2 with its extraordinary solid Luminova Snoopy. You can see the three-dimensional blocks of Luminova on the dial as well as the fully loomed tech. Both of these watches are special and while both are real standouts, the Snoopy I don't think any watch can beat that particular loom shot.